of London is changing and evolving at absolutely extraordinary speed. It is like an accelerated David Attenborough nature film about the return of spring to the Canadian tundra. Wonderful structures are going up. All prices across London have gone up by 20% in the last year. The result is that we face a colossal demand for homes, homes that are affordable for all Londoners. Regeneration means money for the fat cats. That's what it means. The original dream of council houses was to build homes for heroes, moving the working classes out of overcrowded slums and into revolutionary architecture, offering running water and futuristic streets in the sky. When we come here, I took to it in a minute when I was looking out there and see all that green. Oh, I thought, ain't it lovely? Well, over night time, it's just like, exactly like fairyland. But today, the post-war dream of urban renewal has turned sour. The number of council houses in London has fallen by a third in the last 20 years, despite a million more people living here. We don't have enough homes, full stop, right across the entire economy. That affects everyone. There's a real pinch point with affordability, and we certainly don't have enough affordable homes. The council estates we do have are gradually being emptied. People are being forced out by local councils to allow for redevelopment of the land. The highest bidders are winning, but the people are fighting back. All they give a shit about is making fucking money. In recent months, a group of London mums have started a campaign for truly affordable housing. Their campaign has caught the imagination of the media and public alike and has sparked fires all across the city. One of the areas undergoing a lot of regeneration at the moment is East London. The borough of Newham has a housing waiting list of over 16,000 people. The council have said that because the refurbishment is too expensive, the estate is no longer viable and they are currently seeking a partner to help finance the regeneration. In the meantime, people are being rehoused in temporary accommodation where waiting lists are long, or they're moved into towns far away from London. In 2013, my mum's sister and I were evicted from our family home of 13 years. We had to declare ourselves statutory homeless and then move into temporary accommodation where we were waiting for a year. It was a really, really tough time being told that you had to wait in order to have somewhere to live. So when I see lots and lots of empty homes like this going unlived in, it really, really strikes a chord with me. I'm standing on the 22nd floor of one of the tower blocks on the Carpenters Estate in Stratford. It's only up here that you can see why it's become such prime real estate. We've got Westfield Shopping Centre. We've got 10 train lines, so insanely good transport links. And then round the corner is the Olympic site. And if you come through here, this is what's happened to the flat. I think like 2006 families started being moved out and now it's pretty much like desolate and this is just an example of what's happening on every single floor. It actually could be the homes of 134 families but currently there's only 31 flats being used, all the rest are just like locked up. If you look through the keyhole, you can see that through the big window, directly opposite, an amazing view of the Olympic Park. There's all mats down as well, carpet. These aren't empty shells. This was someone's home. You know, so there's been a family that have chosen that carpet, they've chosen the wallpaper and they've made a home. Chris, if you come and see this Just Gone shop, won't be long, 12th of the 1st, 2006. That's a long time that these flats have been empty. Just seems such a shame when we hear from politicians and uh, newspapers that we're in the midst of a housing crisis, there just aren't enough homes, that there are all these flats on numerous floors that are going unlived in. This video was designed for a Chinese expo in 2010, offering up 1,000 hectares of Newham land as an investment opportunity. It's interesting, isn't it, seeing the amount of luxury home development, the developers who are building them, 
make the biggest profit. From a local government point of view, if it's on land that they own, that's the way that they get the biggest capital receipt. And local authorities in London, as everywhere else in the country, are under huge financial pressure. It's not a surprise that they want to make the best use of the assets. I do think it's short-sighted though. We need good economic mix. London cannot afford to export the majority of its people and become an enclave for the wealthy. It will not function if that's the case. I'm about to meet the Focus E15 mums who have politically occupied one of the houses on Carpenter's estate to try and draw national attention to the issue. The Focus E15 campaigners had set the occupation up like a social centre to put the community back into the ghost town. The Mayor of Newham, Sir Robin Wells, has been cast as the villain in the Mums campaign. So Robin Wells has said that the properties are not fit for housing. However, Newham, like other councils, have increasing power under the Localism Act to take advantage of the rising land value in their borough. Outside, I met Jamie who had gone through her own housing struggles and had come down to show support. Who do you think London's for now? Everybody, everybody. As I say, don't close the doors, man. Everybody's welcome. I'm not going to hate anybody because they have wealth. There's no problem with anybody coming here. Just don't push me out. There is enough space for everybody. It's evident, like... Or, or the empty flats. Or the empty flats. As if you can build high-rises, you can build more. Just build more that I can live in, that I can afford. I'm not saying don't cater for people that are going to come here and invest in the place. I'm just saying, please don't make me leave. Or, no, do you know what? No please anymore. I'm not going. Soz. <laughs> Soz. So after opening up this property about a week and a half ago, they found out that the properties were obviously completely habitable. And now they've put this sign up, which is Council Homes Available, and call Robin Wells. That's his number. Jasmine Stone is one of the Focus E15 mothers leading the occupation. She's been campaigning for council housing ever since she was evicted from temporary accommodation last year. Where did the idea for the campaign come from? Like this, this is going to be a social centre, it's like the centre of Carpenter's estate. Well, um, there's so many people that are being forced out of London to places like Manchester, Hastings and Birmingham. So um, we thought we'd highlight the issue of there being so many homes boarded up for years on end. Some of the properties on this estate have been empty for over eight years. I'll show you the show flat. This would have been a one bedroom flat. This would have been the first bedroom. This is crazy. This would have been the living room. The wallpaper was already here, the carpet and the rug were here. And we put in the furniture. After we'd lived in a hostel and they gave us a flat, this is like better than yeah, when we first moved in. So you've got ideal view here. Yeah, this is in the shadow of the Olympic Park. It's obvious what's happening. Like they're trying to demolish everything and if you have a look around, you see all these big, giant glass buildings mm. that nobody can afford in the local area. Since this occupation, we were actually told by the council that we prevented them putting people in here. They've been empty for eight years, and apparently we were the ones that stopped them over the last two weeks. It's basically just saying that your land is worth more than you. Yeah, exactly. There's people that have created memories here and they've given birth to their children and these homes are people's lives. Well, by taking someone's home away from them, they're taking their life away. The mothers weren't the only ones wanting to stay in London. 15-year-old Saffron had also joined the fight back. No 15 or 14-year-old should actually think, fuck, we're getting moved out of London. They should be going to school, they should be playing with their friends and doing what they want. Where the hell am I going to be put? Am I going to be living on the street? Am I going to be in a care home? No one wants to live in a council property. Absolutely no one. But if that's all you're given, then that's what you're going to make home. And it's to take it away from someone, that's not fair. This campaign, there was something so new and so fresh about it. First of all, they've shown that there are homes, people just need to be put in them. Then they've wiped away the excuse of Robin Wells, who said that they were unlivable, because if you look around, people could make a home there. In a situation when you do feel desperate and alone, these mums represent something really, really inspiring and really, really exciting because they're actually fighting back. Repopulate the Carpenters' estate. 
Repopulate the Carpenters' estate. The occupation attracted the attention of two local councillors who decided to come down and show their face. Social rent is probably about 50%, half of market rents. There's 24,000 people in this borough out of 300,000 households who are in desperate housing need. And it's a huge number, isn't it? It's a huge number. The big issue is there is a housing crisis in, in London, in this country, and it's an affordability crisis. If you've got money, you can find somewhere to live. If you haven't got money, you've got nowhere to live. If we're going to get build homes that these you know, young people and their children want and deserve, um, at a price they can afford, or well, somebody's going to have to pay for that. The wider problem is recycling. When, when properties become vacant, getting them ready and getting the legal possibility for people to come in and, uh, and live there. After occupying the building for a week and a half, the Focus E15 mothers were handed an eviction notice from the council. <laughs> 